Hey there! Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an awesome dashboard to control your Christmas light decorations. It's fun, simple, and will bring your holiday setup to the next level. So, grab a hot cocoa, and let's get started. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created my Christmas dashboard to control all my holiday lighting. The first step was connecting my Christmas lights to smart controllers. I used Sunoff devices, but you can use any compatible ones you have on hand. I'll drop some links in the description for different options you can check out. To make things even easier, I'll also share all the files and configurations you'll need if you want to replicate this dashboard yourself. Here's the plan. First, I created the images for the dashboard, including the base of the controller, the buttons, and the status indicators that show whether the lights are on or off. When setting this up in Home Assistant, the order in which you add the elements is super important. Start by adding the base of the control panel, then layer in the switches and status indicators. With that said, let's dive in and bring this dashboard to life. So, I start in the Overview tab in Home Assistant and create a new dashboard. I click on the Edit Dashboard button in the top right corner, then hit the plus button to add a new one. For the name, I go with Christmas, because, of course, it fits the theme, and I choose the tree icon to keep it festive. I set the layout to Panel and hit Save. With the dashboard set up, it's time to upload the files I'll be using. To do that, I open the file editor and click the little folder icon at the top. From there, I find the www folder in the local directory. If you don't see the www folder, no worries, you'll just need to create it and restart Home Assistant to make it show up. Once I'm in the www folder, I create a new folder called Christmas. I just click the Create Folder button, name it, and then open it up to start uploading all the files I need. I already have everything organized in a folder, and I'll share all these files with you in the description so it's easy to follow along. I'll speed up this part while I upload the files so we can get straight to the fun stuff. All right. Now that all the files are uploaded, it's time to jump back to the dashboard I just created and start adding the elements. First, I click the Add Card button, scroll down, and select Picture Elements. Once the card is added, I delete the State Badge element because I don't need it for the setup. Next, in the Card Options, I replace the default image with the one I want as the background. I do this by entering the file's location in the Local Path Input box. One of the images I just uploaded shows up immediately in the preview, perfect. I hit save to lock it in. With the background set, I can start adding the control panel elements. I click the edit button at the bottom and add a new image element by selecting it from the drop down menu. This first element is purely visual, it doesn't have any active function. I name it blinker and set both the tap and hold behaviors to nothing. Then, I enter the image location in the local path input box, and it shows up in the preview. At first, the image is way too big and completely out of place. So, I adjust it by adding values to the style input box to resize and reposition it. After a bit of tweaking, it looks just right. I hit save again, and the first element of the control panel is done. Let's keep going. I hit the edit button again and add another image element, but this time, to speed things up, I click the duplicate button on the existing element. I change the title to console because this will be the base element of my control panel. 
I leave the tap and hold behaviors set to nothing and enter the image location in the local path input box. At first, the image is too small because it's still using the size and position values from the previous element. So, I adjust them to get everything in the right spot and the right size. And there it is, my control panel base is ready. Now I go back to add the rest of the elements. I duplicate another image element, but this time, I choose the Christmas tree entity because this will be the indicator for the Christmas tree lights. It will display different images depending on whether the lights are on or off. I name this element tree. Leave the tap and hold behaviors as nothing, and delete the image path. I want the image to change based on the state of the tree lights, so I insert the image locations in the state image input box. Like this. For the on state, I put the path for the image when the lights are on, and for the off state, I do the same for the lights being off. I then adjust the values in the style input box to resize and reposition the images. Once everything looks good, I hit save to check if the size and positioning are just right. Now, I'm going to add the rest of the indicator elements by repeating these same steps. I hit the edit button again, duplicate the image element, and change the entity to the window Christmas lights entity. Then, I update the title to window lights. Just like before, I leave the tap and hold behaviors set to nothing. I update the image paths in the state image box to use the ones that represent the window lights on and off. Next, I adjust the values in the style input box to resize and reposition the images. And there it is, it looks great. Now, I go back to the elements. I duplicate the image element again and change the entity to the Christmas star entity. Then, I update the title to star. Just like before, I leave the tap and hold behaviors set to nothing. I update the image paths in the state image box to use the ones that represent the starlight being on or off. Next, I tweak the values in the style input box to resize and reposition the images so they look just right. Now, it's time for the last indicator, the train around the tree. I duplicate the image element once more, change the entity to the Christmas train entity, and update the title to train. Again, I leave the tap and hold behaviors set to nothing. I update the image paths in the state image box to show the images for the train running or stopped. Finally, I adjust the values in the style input box to resize and reposition the images. I'll hit save to see how everything's looking. And yep, it looks great to me. Now, I'll start adding the switches. I hit edit again, duplicate the image element, and change the entity to the Christmas tree entity. Then, I update the title to tree. I change the tap behavior to toggle and leave the hold behavior set to nothing. I also update the image paths in the state image box to use the ones that represent the switch being on and off. Next, I adjust the values in the style input box to resize and reposition the images. In the preview, everything looks to be in the right spot. Back to the elements, I duplicate the image element again and change the entity to the window lights entity. Then, I update the title to window lights. I leave the tap behavior to toggle and leave the hold behavior set to nothing. I also update the image paths in the state image box to reflect the switch being on and off. Next, I adjust the values in the style input box to resize and reposition the images. Now, back to the elements once more. I duplicate the image element again, change the entity to the star entity, and update the title to star. I leave the tap behavior to toggle and leave the hold behavior as nothing. Then, I update the image paths in the state image box to use the ones that represent the switch on and off. Next, I adjust the values in the style input box to resize and reposition the images. Once again, back to the elements. I duplicate the image element, change the entity to the train entity, 
and update the title to train. As with the others, I leave the tap behavior set to toggle and the hold behavior to nothing. I update the image paths in the state image box to match the switch on and off states. Next, I adjust the values in the style input box to resize and reposition the images. Finally, I'll hit save to lock everything in. It's almost done. I hit the done button in the top right and test it out. The Christmas tree lights turn on. But there's a small problem, the image representing the switch on isn't showing up. I know what happened. When I duplicated the elements, I changed the name but forgot to update the image extension. So, I need to go back into edit mode. I click the edit dashboard button in the top right, then click edit on the bottom left. Next, I click the edit icon on the image element, scroll down to the state image section, and there it is, I see the issue. The image extension is set to GIF when it should be PNG, because that's the format I saved it in. The fix is simple, I just change the extension to PNG. I hit save, and there it is, problem solved. The switch image is showing now. I just need to repeat this fix for the other on switches. I'll speed up this part. Now, when I turn on the other switches, everything works perfectly. The switches are on, and the indicators show that the corresponding lights are on. If I turn the switches off, everything works fine too.